All right. I hope you're all fine. Uh, seems like it's been a while since I saw you, but you have probably been busy uh, doing the workshops and maybe other courses also. Uh, workshop number one, I have posted my suggested solution. So you can take a look at it and uh, there's also a text that you can read so you can can uh, see or read for yourselves a little bit how uh, how I'm thinking when I'm solving this small uh, problem. You probably have already something similar to this in your own domain models, at least uh, the gist of it should be comparably the same. And then you can focus a little bit more on, on some, some stuff. Many of you focus a lot of on authentication parts, for example, and maybe that's not all that important in the actual domain of both clubs. Uh, but I won't be talking uh, more about that right now. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in Slack or something like that about this workshop. So uh, workshop number two, you should be uh, up and running. Uh, I think I have the I'm not logged in right now, so but you have the submission form here. There are three more days to uh, to go. Also, I would like to remind you that it's better to hand something in, although it's not strictly uh, finished or something like that. Hand it in for the peer review, and you can just uh, make a small readme file or something like that, and and. Uh, write something about, well, we did not have time to finish this requirement, so but take a look at this, focus your peer review on, on these parts uh, that we would like to get feedback uh, from. So that the group that reviews you don't have to uh, uh, try to uh, find the stuff that's not working, that's not supposed to be working, so they don't need to waste their energy on that. But I hope the uh, workshop itself runs along smoothly. Uh, there's always some, some uh, uh, stuff that you can, can uh, solve in, in quite different types of ways, but it's al always interesting to see your solutions in the end. Uh, and feel free to use Slack and other ways to communicate with, with me or the tutors if you have any questions or or ideas on how to solve certain types of problems. Uh, all right, let's continue or uh, make a small repetition maybe on what we did two weeks ago. We had this uh, new domain, a new application that we are supposed to develop and uh, as you could, could see from the domain model we, we uh, could guess from the domain model we are doing a blackjack game. So we have a player and dealer and cards and deck and stuff like that. Uh, and we have some basic requirements. Uh, I think we kind of like did requirement 1A. So today we will continue with requirement 1B and requirement 3 and hopefully at least requirement 2A also. And then we will take a look at the, the design of the, the game so far and, and see how a, a class diagram would look uh, in this design. And we are applying the grasp patterns to do this. And the grasp patterns are general responsibility assignment software patterns. So the idea is to to look at the requirement, look at the domain model, find the responsibilities that we need to uh, implement in order to fulfill the requirement. And responsibility can be in the form of that someone needs to know something, need to have data about something, or someone needs to do something to perform some type of action or something like that. So we're taking these 
responsibilities of knowing and or doing stuff and putting them in the right places in the, desi the design. And so far we took a look at the information expert and the idea in the information expert is to put the responsibility of primarily doing stuff um, in the class that has the information needed. So if you have a, a responsibility of doing something, you should try to find out what information is needed to perform this action and then look in your design or your domain model after the, the class that has this responsibility or has the access to this information and put the responsibility in that class. And the second pattern was the creator pattern. And this is uh, more specifically about object creation. And in our first requirement, we should, should create a deck and we should create cards and stuff like that. So we, we did a, use this pattern a lot. And basically it says, well, uh, we have four cases. And if, if um, object B contains a lot of A objects, well then, then class, the class of object B should be, should be uh, uh, responsible for creating these objects also. Or if B has the information needed to create A objects, put the responsibility in the B class. Or if B objects records A objects or are used closely. <coughs> so we get some, some form of guidelines here. Right, let's just uh, take a look at the code we produced. Uh, I think it's here. It was actually quite small right now. The program does not do anything. But as you can see, we have at least three classes. And these reflect our, our domain quite clearly. We have the dealer class that kind of like contains or manages or whatnot what the deck and the deck contains a lot of cards. We decided that when the deck is created, <coughs> created, the cards are created also and put into the deck. And we can also see that the dealer, when it's created, it creates a new deck and it also shuffles the deck. So they have some form of random order. And the responsibility to shuffle, we had a discussion if, well, should the dealer shuffle the deck or should the deck be responsible for, for shuffling? And while in reality it's of course the dealer that takes a card from the deck and, sh and puts it on a random spot in the deck, but in the design the information expert pattern well kind of like showed us that well in order to shuffle you need to have access to the cards and it's the deck that has access to the cards in the deck right now. So we put that responsibility here. Any questions so far? All right, then let's just continue with the, uh, the next requirement. So let's go up here and let's do requirement 1b. Information on how to play is presented. So, the first thing is, um, I think this is quite a simple requirement. We uh, just have some, some kind of information that needs to be uh, presented. Uh, we're doing a console application, so it will be in text form, this, inf in this uh, information. So some kind of text on how to play the game uh, should be displayed in the console. So, in our architecture, where should this responsibility be? Responsibility to present stuff for the user. View. Exactly. So,
So it's not a model responsibility to display things. It's, uh, displaying is, is clearly something that is supposed to be in the user interface. And the uh, view should probably be the one that is responsible for having the information and have, having knowledge on how to present this. So let's add it. And this is good because now we need to kind of like add stuff in, in all of our components. Uh, I'm in the wrong directory. I was. So, just uh, echoing out a, a short uh, menu of stuff. Maybe we should have like small p there to be the uh, clear. Uh, basically, we have you can start a new game. You, you can uh, get a new card by hitting, and you can uh, tell the, the tell that you don't want to get any more cards, and you can quit. So it's quite simple. So OK, we have allocated the responsibility of displaying instructions to our uh, console class. This is, of course, not a class that we can find in the domain model because it's a software concept. So uh, often we have the domain model classes inside the model in the model view controller pattern. Uh, but you can also invent new classes, of course, if they are needed. But this is a pure invention that we have kind of like uh, done to create a software program for this. So, but we also need someone to tell the console to, okay, actually present this. And as said in the chat here, well, in our architecture, the controller is managing how the, uh, the, uh, the user interface behaves and, and directs the, the, um, the model to do certain stuff. So we should probably add a controller to, to, uh, to actually uh, tell the view to show this, this type of instruction. So let's do it.
too early in the morning it seems. Alright, the next thing to decide is how does the, uh, the player get access to the view? Any ideas? Okay, we have one suggestion here, subscribe to the view. I'm not really sure what you mean. Um, the, the idea is in, 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 some, in some form here, we need to, to, uh, to, to have an object here that is of the type console so that we can call this present instructions so that we can show the uh, yeah the player need to have a view object but how does the uh, the, the uh, controller get this object exactly we can create an object oh opposite We can try this this type of solution. Um, Exactly. We also need the package. Oh, sorry. Too early. Definitely too early. Finally. All right. So this is definitely something that would would work. Uh, so this is one option, to create the object when it's needed. So, yeah, we could do this, definitely. Do we have any other options?
as a parameter exactly, we could opt to send it in here. You. And move the responsibility to create the view to uh, the program. Send the view in here instead. And do it like this. Same behavior, same uh, stuff. So, how would this look in a class diagram? Both of these um, solutions will look the same. What kind of relationship will we have between the, the uh, controller player and the view console? We will have a dependency. We will not have an association because we don't have a member variable or attribute here in the console class of type here in, in the player of type console view. So this will be a dependency. And exactly the other one will also be a dependency. We're just creating an object locally in the play game operation and then throwing it away. So which one should you go, go for? And, and we could, of course, add. I, I would like to add this uh, uh, view console as a member here, and, and then we will get the association. So which one should you, you, should you go for? Well, uh, the, the answer is, is not uh, cut in stone. You could, of course, do, do it in, in, in any of these ways. Um, right now, the view is very simple. It does not contain any, anything that is actually needed to be remembered for a long time. It's just kind of like a, a function, more or less. Um, but it will probably grow. It will be will be more functionality in it. So I I possibly there will be some kind of state inside the view also that, that is needed to be remembered. So if we then create the new view object, we will kind of like lose this state all over. So creating a local variable in this case is maybe not the best choice. Uh, so the choice is more or less between sending it in as a parameter or keeping it as uh, a, uh, an attribute instead. Right now, I think keeping it this way is the best because we don't need to remember any uh, we don't have any other functionality in the controller than the play game operation right now. And we don't need access to the view in any other function that we are not kind of like calling directly. And also you, you could, could think about the responsibility of creating the view. Who should have that responsibility? So you, you can think about this problem from, from the creator standpoint also. And I think it would be a, a bad idea if the controller had this responsibility, because this would tie the controller quite tightly to a concrete view. 
if you remember in our dice game we wanted to be, be able to change the view we had a Swedish translation and a, an English and this would of course become hard if we create the view inside the controller this would become harder we don't have that requirement right now but um, the, the architecture as it is kind of like couples view and controller tightly by default so adding more coupling is probably not a good idea so the responsibility to create the view should not be, probably not be put in the controller and instead we have this kind of like outside uh, program class that is kind of like responsible for starting things up and while in the architecture we need some kind of a model representation, a view representation and a controller representation and we need to put these parts together in, in some way for, for stuff to work. So, next requirement. Uh, well, let's just do the quit also so that we have some form of input into the game and then maybe our chain is is complete. So, all right. Oops. The responsibility is once again to collect some form of input from the console. Where should we put this responsibility? In the view, exactly. It's kind of like low level knowledge about the console. We have this already in this form. So let's just take some uh, copy pasting maybe from, from our little dice game. Oops, wrong one. This was way too, way too basic. Here we have to make. So, okay, we can do something like this. We can collect the input and we also need to kind of like transform this into an event that someone can, can handle. So let's just something like that and who should ask the view if the view has detected that the user wants to quit yc is an integer i think this get the input carry just returns the character as an integer so that's that's why
so who should have the, re the responsibility to ask the the uh, view that if the user wants to quit the controller yay exactly so after we have presented the instructions using the view and um, we can use the view again uh, to just uh, ask if we want to quit and the operation was this and I will just kind of like So if we in input anything else right now, then quit. We just display this main instructions over and over and over again. All right, progress. So we have actually implemented two requirements of three. So 80% done, or maybe not. Uh, but we have actually used a new pattern here. So, oh, this is the wrong machine. We have used the controller pattern and things might get a little bit confusing now since we're also using the model view controller uh, architecture. And this is basically the, uh, the controller part in this architecture also, that is a grasp pattern. So, a system event, that is something major that ha happens in the system. For example, I would like to quit, I would like to start a new game, I would like to get more cards, I would like to uh, not get more cards, I would like to add a new member, add a new boat, major stuff that happens, not, oh, I have now inputted the uh, character one in my phone number. So low level input are not system events. You can think of it as, well, I have completely filled in the form right now and now I press that I actually want to do this action. I would like to add the new member and all the information is, is available to do this. So, uh, the idea then is to assign a responsibility to a class that represents the system as a whole. So we have kind of like one big controller for the whole system. This is often called a facade controller. We can have a class that represents a role, a use case or scenario or session. This is basically what we did. We named our, our new uh, controller class player, and that is an actor in the system that has a role. And we even named the operation play game after the, the most major use case or scenario in, in the application. In this game, it's probably the only scenario also. So we used the, this uh, second solution to this uh, problem. Or you can have a class that represents an input device. This is probably more common in uh, more low level controllers and controllers that uh, if you have some kind of special input device. So, but we used this, we used the role player and we used the name of the operation, play game to represent the use case. 
Uh, so we use this controller uh, pattern to uh, solve this problem also of responsibility assignment. All right. Let's uh, move along then. Requirement number one finished, requirement number three finished. However, the big requirement number two is uh, yet to be done. And we will start with the A part here. Play game, the dealer deals the cards to the player and dealer. And I think I have some, some details here. And the idea is that, well, the dealer takes the top card from the deck, shows it, and gives it to the player. And then he takes the top card from the deck again, shows it, and gives it to himself. And once more, he takes the top card from the deck, shows it, and gives it to the player. And four, the dealer takes the top card from the deck and gives it to himself, but keeps the card hidden. And lastly, the scores of the dealer and player hands are presented. So, quite a... I would not say large, but, but uh, it's quite some, uh, some actions to, to consider here. And we have this, uh, this new idea of, of uh, cards being shown or hidden as a responsibility. Who should know that if a card is shown or hidden? Um, we have this task of, uh, of dealing stuff to, uh, to the player and to the dealer. Uh, who should be responsible for that. Um, and we also have the last responsibility of uh, presenting, calculating scores and presenting uh, these uh, hands that have, have been uh, filled with cards. And who should know what, what hands the, the uh, dealer and player actually has. So that's a, uh, yet another responsibility to think about. But I think we should take one step at a time. And uh, I think also we should take a break before we continue. So uh, let's take 15 minutes of a break and we can start thinking about this maybe a little bit. And we will start by doing a sequence diagram. So we will take a look at that. So I will. I think I will be using the web sequence diagram uh, service, so we can take a look at how to use this. Also, any questions so far? Nothing. All right. Let's take 15 minutes of a break then. <laughs> 